Merry Christmas. It's Christmas Gosh, morning. What a, what a special treat. Wow. To come right into your home and into your sphere. I guess I feel kind of a little part of their Christmas. Yeah, a little for bit sure. Deeper. Amidst all the orange juice and maybe wrapping paper <laughs> and hustle right. and bustle. So neat. Home for Christmas. I love that. That's uh, perfect. I yeah. mean, no place we'd rather be than in your home this morning on Christmas Day. Just coming out of a beautiful uh, candlelight service. Oh, so beautiful. What a beautiful time of the year. And I just love that the world pauses and stops. Yeah. and acknowledges right. one of the most historical, earth-shattering, miraculous moments, the incarnate birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I mean, he just he just takes our breath away, doesn't he? The fact that we know him, can consider him, behold his word and his presence, and it's just, it's just amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. So what an honor. Thank you for opening up your heart and home for us. We're going to talk for a moment here. Yeah. I don't know. I just got a little surprise for just a moment. And we're going to take a moment. Just we got worship prepared. And then I want to share a little message uh, out of Matthew 2 in just a moment on what wise people do. Wise moms, wise dads, wise teenagers. How wow. wise people respond to so Jesus okay. in this hour because our response is so important. I love the thought, babe. And mm. John chapter 1, I've just been considering it so much. It just says, of his fullness. Not half of him, not a little of him, of the fullness of God, of the fullness of Jesus, we have all, mm. everyone received grace for grace, unlimited, wow. unmerited, the gift of Jesus never runs dry. Mm -hmm. I think one translation says grace on top of grace. We have all received from that. Yeah, and I, I, I feel that this morning. I feel that right now. I know you guys feel the grace for grace in your home. And I think if we look for it, and if we're aware of it, we can see it all around. Mm. And his endless gifts are just mm. pouring out again and again and again. I love what that First Corinthians 9, 15. Thanks be to God mm. for his indescribable gift. Wow. He is so indescribable. This morning, we're going to try to describe him in different ways. But he is. He's given us so much. Yeah. Just like this gift. Just like the gifts that you've opened up at home, maybe you don't know what it is. Did you wrap that? I didn't. Because that's like I, professional. <laughs> you just buy it. You just buy it perfectly wrapped so you don't have to do any. I'm done wrapping. I've Gosh, wrapped too many presents. At I, the end, you I, know, I, you I just cheat a little bit. I have go for it. connections. <laughs> yeah, you cheat. You get it wrapped for you. So, but you've just unwrapped all those gifts. And I, mm. I love how you always preach like God is preeminent in our lives yeah. and in your lives. And it's only appropriate on Jesus's birthday, happy birthday, Jesus, that we unwrap some of the gifts that he is to us in our lives. Do you want mm. me to read some? I'm ready. Okay. Let's open some more gifts. <laughs> <laughs> He's amazing. He is Emmanuel, God with mm. us. Mm. I love that it says God with us, not just God with Mary or Joseph or the wise men mm. or Matthew Pollock or Abby Pollock, but it says us, all of us. He is with us at night times, in, in the day, in hard times, in good times. He is always with mm. us, Emmanuel. Mm. Who never leaves our forsakes us. Amen. I love that a gift that we can unwrap in him that is probably so it's the most amazing gift because it promises, promises us eternity is our salvation. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he was born for the reason to die, to give us salvation. Mm -hmm. And I love that in him, he lifts up the horn of salvation, like it mm -hmm. says in Luke. I love salvation. How about mm -hmm. you? Anything you want to say with salvation? Yeah, the beautiful. gift of salvation? Jesus said, when you know him, when you know the Father, that is eternal life. The privilege of knowing God eternally is beautiful. And it says today is the day of salvation. So if you don't know him yet, you'll have an opportunity today to receive him. Mm. All of us are experiencing this now. We experience it every day. The moment we wake up, the moment we go mm. to sleep, um, as the days turn, as the seasons turn, he is our provision. Mm. He gives us, he provides us with everything. Mm. The strength that we need for the day, the calmness, the wisdom we need to walk out different situations, even the bread on our table mm. and the food that we eat and the breath in our lungs. He provides. He is our provision. That's and it. that's such an amazing gift. Mm. One of my favorite is love. Mm. This gift of love is indescribable. Mm. 
doesn't matter what you've done or where you've been in your life, this love covers all. He's amazing. He is love. Mm. It's a perfect love. It's perfect. It casts out all fear. It does. When you're loved by him. You are. You're forever secured. It's what a gift. Mm. This one we needed, especially in these times of, of darkness and deep darkness and raising children in this hour and working um, in this hour and, and decisions that we make is he is our perfect peace. Mm. Our shalom. I love that. It says that it, he will keep us in perfect peace as our mm. hearts and minds stay fixed on him. Wow. Every message uh, of the gospel said, peace on earth, peace on earth. Wow. Peace is a person. And it's it Jesus. Is. Because Jesus. of Jesus, we can have perfect peace mm. in any season of life. Thank God he is the Prince of Peace. He is. It's peace perfect. to every storm. Amen. And for of us that are waiting of the promises of Jesus to come, whether it be in your health or your marriage or your kids or your finances, mm. whatever you're believing for, he is our eternal hope. Wow. I always love what you said about the rope of hope. Yeah. I never forget about that. It's beautiful. Yeah, he, in Hebrews 6, it says that his hope is an anchor to our soul. I feel yeah. like out of heaven, he just throws us a, a rope of hope to hold on to That's and right. anchor us through. I was reading just the other day in Timothy, I didn't see this before, but 1 Timothy 1.1, 1, 1, Paul's saying, I'm writing this by the command of God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ, who is our hope. Mm. Because of Jesus, wow. we can have continual eternal hope. It's amazing. Expectation. Yeah. And knowing that uh, this world is not our home, there is eternity. Amen. Thank Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Also, for, for all of us who've lived in this life and have experiencing health difficulties, whether it's in your mind or mm. whether it's in your physical body or in any situation, we have the gift of healing. Mm. And that is the truth. The children's bread. Yeah. Yeah, that's what the cross of Calvary was. And he shed his blood in seven places and that by mm. his stripes, spirit, soul, and body, we are healed. Oh, amen. Mm. He came to destroy the works of the devil. And so anything that may be trying to steal this in your life. This is a gift from God and you can receive healing right now at the sound of our voice in Jesus name. Um, I love this one too, because we wake up and it's, it's there to meet us. It's there to help us, help us navigate life even when we fall short. Mm. And it's God's amazing grace, grace. his perfect grace. Mm. The grace that gives us life and meaning to get up, even when we don't know. It says that he knows that we are of the dust. And so he provides for us this gift of grace mm. to just walk confidently and boldly into his throne room. Mm. That's it. Thank God for his unlimited grace. So is there amazing. any more? I, mean, we could go on forever. I do. I have okay. one more. Oh, gosh. Here we I go. love this. is probably one of my favorite. But this undescribable gift is... Oh. <laughs> I'm so thankful that for you, love. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Thank you for being God's gift to me mm. and um, God's gift to our church. You're what a incredible. surprise, as you are. What a gift family is, huh? I that was you. special. We could be here for all of eternity <laughs> yes. talking about these gifts, and that was so well said. Let's pray in just a moment. Open up your hearts. We have a beautiful worship a moment prepared by our team, and then we'll come back, and I'll share the word of the Lord. Father, wow. Mm. The indescribable gift, it uh, takes her breath away and we just can't even fully fathom the fullness of Jesus. But with all of our hearts and minds, we open our hearts and we just say, thank you for all of eternity to know you and to be experiencing the salvation and gift of your son, Jesus Christ, and to celebrate his life mm. forever. Thank we you, celebrate the King yes, of Kings Jesus. and the Lord of Lords. We crown you as King and we say you're the Lord of our hearts, the Lord of our lives, the Lord of our homes, the Lord of our families. We thank you for this time today. May your peace and your presence you, fill and flood every heart in Jesus name. Let's Amen. worship.
shepherds and came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. Praise the Father, praise the Son, oh praise the Spirit, three in one, oh God of glory, majesty, oh praise forever to the To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake, you died. In the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath Till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs, all the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored Church of Christ was born and the Spirit lit the flame. Now, this gospel and truth of all it shall not kneel, it shall not fade. By His blood and in His name, in His freedom, I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Praise forever to our King of Amen. Kings. Amen. Beautiful. I um, like like we said, you 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 can kind of get some clarity, um, in Luke's gospel of the details of the birth. I love how mm. Luke presents it, but also Matthew and Matthew one and Matthew two really lead in to the gospel story, and I want us to kind of take a moment and have Abby read mm. from Matthew two all the way to verse 12, it gives us insight to these men, these magi, wow. men from the East, yeah. who were following the star, and it kind of paints a beautiful picture. But when we consider in this hour the importance and significance of being wise men and wise women and yeah. wise people and the importance of that, what does that look like? How does that translate? How does that articulate? I love, though, before I have Abby read Matthew 2, I love what Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, it says, Thus says the Lord, mm. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, 
Let not the mighty man glory in his might, nor the rich man glory in his riches. Uh, it's so easy. We have a world today that's always been, but it's infested with lustful things. True. And we put such priority and prize on who we know or what we have or what we've accomplished. And God, in <laughs> essence, to our God is like, don't even glory or boast in that. Wow. All the material things around and about us really have no eternal significance. They'll just rot away. True. And even the Christmas season, sometimes we can get so materialistic, mm. just so fixated on all these material things. But I love what God says in Jeremiah, but let him who glory, yeah. glories, glory in this, that he understand and knows me. I'm the Lord, exercising, working, mm. loving kindness, mm. judgment, righteousness in the earth. That's what we delight in. And so understanding that true wisdom, real wisdom, whoever you study, whoever you <laughs> admire or appreciate, right. uh, is from Elon Musk to Solomon <laughs> to David yeah. to whomever athlete. You may be watching football today, basketball. I'm going to be watching some games today. Yeah. <laughs> Steph Curry or whomever. But this is the real thing to glory in, mm. the privilege of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, that our faith is in him, our righteousness is in him, and in that we glory. I love that. Amen. Babe, would you read yes. the gospel story from Matthew chapter 2? Two. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea mm. in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Mm. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. Mm. So they said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for this it is written by the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Mm. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, Bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. Mm. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east, which they had seen far off, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with ex exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. Mm -hmm. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Verse 12, then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Wow. I love all that. I do love her voice as well. Doesn't <laughs> she have an amazing voice? I love when we talk on the phone and hearing your voice. Um, so Matthew gives a different account, of course. And I love, again, just, just in, in connotation and in, in biblical accuracy, we could go back to Matthew 1, I think, in verse 18, that begins this whole story. Mm. We're leading into chapter 2. But I love how chapter 2 begins, understanding that the Bible wasn't written in chapter and verse, but I love what it says. It says, now after, mm. now after Jesus Christ was born. Mm. I love that because we live on this side of history. Sure. Um, there was a whole humanity that lived before his birth, waited for his birth. Wow. There was a part of humanity that lived during his birth in, in that moment. And then there's human history that is now after. Mm. I think the greatest privilege in all of those dispensations or time periods is the ones who get to live now after. So good. But what that tells me is too, is that we are the people now after his birth, mm. what the honor, the privilege, we get to read about it, study about it. We get to know the historical evidence yeah. of it all. We get um, the, the biblical <laughs> literacy. Right. But also we have a responsibility to steward his birth and what's taking place wow. with that. And I love that. That's the dispensation we're, we're in. And I think, too, I want to say that's what we're accountable for. Mm. We're accountable for the stewardship of now after. 
It also depicts these wise men, or better known as the Magi from the East. As I kind of did a little understanding of this, just to kind of put ourselves on that story, because we can just read over and gloss over that. But it says that these men were experts. They were experts. They were a high-end society, very astute, very educated. You can trace them all the way back to the days of Daniel. They had their own, they were very, very uh, intellectual. And they studied stars and astrology. I can, to this day, I just love looking at the stars. Haven't we just, have you noticed the sunsets (laughs) lately and the stars? We just love, the other day we were walking our dog and you're like, in Casper, Wyoming. Yes, you can see you can all see everything <laughs> point out the different constellations but it's said to believe that they came from persia mm-hmm. and they had intense knowledge of the hebrew scriptures all the way back to daniel um, they were esteemed in science and um, a part of this whole tribe that descended from the medes mm-hmm. um, and they were very influential in the babylonian roman empires they would actually use them to filter truth and kind of they were like the um, almost like the counterfeits that would help uh, help bring understanding to that. And so here they are, these group of men who have studied and somehow discern and know that there's going to be a distinct star right. sent from heaven to follow that thing. I just think that's so powerful. There's another ingredient there that talks so distinctly about the days of Herod. In fact, within Matthew, verse 7, 12, 15, 16, 19, mm-hmm. Luke 1, Luke 3, all mention that Jesus was born in the days of Herod. Wow. It, the Bible gives distinct things. Mm-hmm. I think that 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 Herod it, it carries a lot. I think we can go back to say Pharaoh in the Old Testament, Herod in the New Testament. Herod, as you study that closely, his whole intent was to be malicious. Mm-hmm. He was very deceptive. Mm-hmm. He was strong politically, and he wanted to erase and eradicate Jesus. Same thing today. Same thing. We can call it as the Antichrist spirit at work, sure. and you can see him endeavoring to manipulate mm-hmm. these wise men to erase Jesus. We're living too in the days of Herod. Yeah. You can take a different name or a different face on it. Yeah. Same spirit, political spirit, a political agenda. He uh, Herod, um, he got in office about four BC. Um, he was ruthless, self-centered, full of false deception. Um, he wanted to be worshipped. He was really insecure and so jealous that if anyone else got worship, it would affect his kingdom wow. and affect his empire. He's famous for rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem. And again, his heart and his soul was uh, to, to sabotage the worship of Jesus. And again, we could go on about this forever. Yeah. That's so relative today, today. in that moment. Um, so here we are. Now after Jesus is born, um, it it just start, if we could kind of in the lens of these wise people kind of articulate that. It says, Behold, from these wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. And I love that. Um, if we could just draw um, some practical wisdom, practical insight, some practicalities to that. I love that they came from the east to follow Jesus. I did some other research. It was said to believe that Bethlehem from where they were was 400 miles away. So in that day, on camel or by foot, a trip of 400 miles for the Magi would have taken three weeks, wow, around a month, by foot. So let's assume they traveled by night using the star to lead them. It would have taken a little bit longer, probably 40 days. 40-day mm. journey, 40 significant, wow. right? So many ways. Therefore, we conclude that these Magi's traveled from the east 400 to 700 miles. And I just love that because I think we're maybe in a time right now that we may believe Jesus is the star, the son of God, but we don't want to follow. Yeah, the convenience. They could have quit. They got tired. I mean, think about that journey, the weather, the opposition, the questioning, Mm -hmm. the confusion. But I just love the fact that these men from the east Mm -hmm. saddled up their donkeys, didn't look back, Mm -hmm. and just said, like, we have decided to follow Jesus. And I just want to emphasize that today in this Christmas season. Like, are you still following? Mm. Have you started the journey and then circumstances set in? Have you allowed your year to get lost and hustle and bustle? And have you, are you maybe at mile marker 200 and you set up shop? (laughs) You haven't arrived. (laughs) We're following Jesus. And I just love their commitment, their dedication, their challenge to follow Jesus. What an honor just to follow Jesus. If you look in Acts 2, in, in the book of Acts, even the beginning, uh, those who put their faith in Jesus were called followers of the way. Yeah. We're following Jesus. And what a privilege that is mm-hmm. in a dark world and a lost world to follow him at that way. 
Uh, it then says in verse 9, when they heard the king, they departed. When they heard uh, the king, they departed and went their way. Um, in that, and then it says, let me read that in verse 9. Uh, could you read it for me, babe? Yes. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. So within those some verses of 6, 7, 8, 9, Herod is trying to manipulate them. He's trying to say, if you find him, let me know that I can worship him. And there's all that mm. taking place. I love that it says that that these men weren't influenced by Herod. They weren't pressurized, persecution came, mm. hardship came, maybe family members got conflicted, but it says they departed and went their own way. They still mm. stayed on track. They were really wise. They were very <laughs> wise. They didn't allow the things of this world to divert them and divert their attention. Mm. And right now the world is so loud. Herod is speaking so loud, influencing so many believers. And, and a lot of us, if we're not careful, are getting off onto that way. We're diverting the, the attention. But this says they went back on their own way. They stayed the course mm -hmm. and they stayed the direction. That's great. And in, in, in John 14, uh, Judas Iscariot said, Lord, how is it that you'll manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, I love this, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. Mm -hmm. It's just so important to keep the word. That's good. Amidst attack, yeah. amidst friends, I mean, just, just keeping hold of that. You will be tested. It will be tried. Jesus told, you know, um, Peter, do you really love me? Mm -hmm. And I love that these men had the ability to be tempted mm -hmm. and to follow Herod, but they went and, and heard that and still went the way they were going to go. And it's so powerful mm -hmm. when we keep his word, when we follow his word and obey his word, mm -hmm. it's such a powerful thing. And then verse 10 says, that when they saw the star, when they approached Jesus and that birth, which he had already been born, mm -hmm. they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. I think that's powerful. They saw and recognized it. They mm -hmm. acknowledged that. They knew they found, and they were with such exuberation. They saw, recognized something. They sought their face. They knew what they were finding. And that's just a powerful thing that we're in pursuit of Jesus. And when we find it, there should be one continual response yes. of him of his praises, the festal praise, the festal shout of praise. Mm -hmm. They they knew that 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 he was the one, mm -hmm. and they didn't compromise on that. And that 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 exuberant rejoicing was just so powerful. And because of Jesus, and because we know Jesus, I just think there should be that exceeding great sound of joy, yeah. of redemption, of our Messiah, of our salvation. Um, they rejoiced in the, in the uh, all different places. But let's face it too. God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light unto our pathway. Mm -hmm. This is the light. This is the truth. And also the Bible says in, 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 in verse uh, 103 of Psalms 119 that his word gives us light and insight. Mm -hmm. The more we're in the word, the more we see him, we get insight and light and revelation of that. And it's so powerful yeah. to walk in those ways of that. Do you have anything you want to say at this moment? It's beautiful. It's great. Keep going. <laughs> so they saw that. They they. Even we can come into his presence with thanksgiving, mm -hmm. enter into his courts with praise. So there was such a protocol. Yeah. There was such jubilation. There was mm -hmm. such Jesus. And then I love this. And it's so subtle, but it says they came into the house. Mm -hmm. God has a house, and God has a will, and he has a plan. I like that they didn't stay outsiders. Mm -hmm. They didn't just hear the gospel and stop. They didn't just stay as, as uh, you know strangers. They came into the house, and... Isn't that the truth? Jesus wants us to enter in yeah. to the depth of who he is and draw close to him and come into his house, his church, and with his family and friends. They came into the house. They refrained from being outsiders. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Jesus has, he tabernacles in us, we're his body, but there also is a physical location sure. of the Gathering local church. Heaven. And I know right now, and I don't, I we are pastors, but there's so many people right now who have been separated from not the spiritual house of God, because we are spiritual, right. but from a physical gathering. The Herod spirit has made your Sunday busy. Wow. The Herod spirit has told you to compromise mm -hmm. and no, no longer hold the Sabbath day sacred, special, sacred. Yeah. But these wise men came into the house of God. And 
I'm reminded too, at the age of 12, Jesus is asked when he's left behind by his parents, and he's in the temple, and, and they come in kind of questioning and, can, you know, not questioning Jesus, what happened to you? And he says this verse, he says, don't you know that I must be in my father's house mm. and I must be about my father's business? Mm. I don't know, I want to do a couple things well in this hour. I want to be about my father's business and I want to be found in his house. But you know what I've realized? It's hard to be about his, your father's business you if you're not it. faithful in the Father's house. Because yeah. <laughs> in the Father's house, you sit under the anointing yeah. of God and the Word of God, and you and you remain in that place, and it helps you stay faithful mm. to. And I think Jesus, like these wise men, is calling people back to his house, yeah, back to him, back to his body, each other. back to his fellowship. We need to be together. They came in. Don't be an outsider. Yeah. Be family. That's good. Amen. Even now with your family, like, there's probably different fractions and issues and anxieties. Don't let your family just be a bunch of outsiders. Yeah. Forgive, love each other, come to the table, talk about what you're thankful for, yeah. bless each other. Yeah. We're not in Jesus by the blood of Jesus. We're no longer outsiders. We're family. Right. Paul said, I bow my knee to the Father whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We're family with God. Come close. Even shame, guilt, whatever. Come yeah. into God's. Come close to Jesus. And again, uh, babe and you, if we take, if we draw near to him, he Jesus. will draw near to us. What a miracle mm. of that. And then what they do when they came in, they fell down and worshiped him. Mm. The only right response is surrender. Yeah. Isn't that right? Bowing down. Ah, humility is mm. so special. Humility is so powerful. You know, right now, maybe you may not feel right with Jesus. You may not feel his presence. Maybe if you take a, a fair assessment over the year, maybe you're not right where you should be. Yeah. But man, if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, mm -hmm. get to your knees and cry out to Jesus. And I, that is such a powerful posture. Yeah. You know what? Just surrender. Stop fighting it. You need help in your marriage. You need help in your sphere. You need help. And let it, let the Spirit of God, like, soften your heart. And I love that they just bowed down yeah. and they worshiped him. I just want to keep that posture. Yeah. Huh? I try to, it's my now protocol. I start the day and I literally Amen. bow, bow my knee before the Lord, kneel before the Lord, your maker, yeah. and ask for his help. And I just think it's so powerful. They were fully surrendered in that. And they were adults bowing Grown. to a child. Wow. We forget about that. Like literally they were worshiping a child. Educated, smart, smart, astute, wealthy. They've waited for their whole life. They've been seeking mm -hmm. the stars. This was the moment. This is the king. And there he is, a child, and worshiping him in a probably little old house, common house, mm. and giving their worship. Isn't that powerful? It's so powerful. Now after, we're worshipers. Yeah. We respond to that. And then it says right in the same text, uh, this is, in essence, you know, my point four, but it says then they open up. Their treasures of their heart. Yeah. They open up their heart. They open yeah. up the treasures, and they presented um, gifts of gold, fragrance, and myrrh. I think this is personal. I think it's an act of faith, an mm. act of obedience. And yeah. that I would could sit here for hours, but like that's the whole truth to Jesus. Have you opened up the core of your being to Him? That's the essence of worship. Yeah. Should are we still open? So many people. I don't want to elaborate this and be, but so many people through lawlessness, hardship of life difficulties and challenges, if we could face it, your heart is hard. Your heart is hard and you've closed off. Yeah. We need to be open in this hour, open to forgiveness, mm -hmm. open to God, open to his word. We maybe have seen so many things that to self-preserve and protect us, we've kind of cut off, but they opened up their treasures. Mm -hmm. They presented to him gifts. And the best thing you can do is humble yourself to Jesus and stay open. Don't close off. In fact, Jesus says in Matthew 24 that, that in the last days there will be such lawlessness, such lust, so many things happening that the hearts of many mm -hmm. will grow cold and callous. And they open them up. I think, again, it's personal. They had personal gifts. You need to make Jesus personal. Mm -hmm. um, you can live through our faith, or, but it's something powerful when you live through your faith, yeah. when your faith becomes personal. I also think it was a test of faith. We trust you. We're, 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 we're proclaiming you're the king. Yeah. We're giving you that. And then ultimately it's a step of obedience. And there's that perpetual thing. They unlocked a powerful secret in generosity. And I know people right now may be a little religious and say, you know what, we don't believe in giving gifts and all that. It takes away from Jesus. I think that's wrong. <laughs> I think we're to be imitators of God and love God and God set the tone. Right. 
And I think that generosity is one of the most beautiful things God, is, whom God so loved the world mm. that he gave. And that gift has never ended. God is the most generous, merciful, kind reality there is. And all we're doing is mimicking the Father and giving gifts of love and of mm-hmm. words. Of course, it's beyond the gift. Of course. But they brought him gifts. Yes. And those gifts were of different value and different significance mm-hmm. and all that. But I think those men open up generosity. And, you know, I was sitting with a young man here who I'm very proud of going through a challenging time. And he opened up to me in a very transparent way about some personal struggles through his childhood. He read me some things, and I was so moved by that. And I just challenged him, and I said, you know what? This is what I want you to do. You go first. Would you go to these individuals, and would you open up your heart? Would you do two things? Ask for forgiveness, and then say you're sorry for what you've done. Because you have to be open to receive, and that just unlocks things. And I think our generosity, us going first, just can unlock so many other things in our lives. And they did that. Um, generosity is so powerful. They unlock things. Uh, a generous man devises generous things, and by his generosity, yeah. he will stand. If we went over to Luke for a moment, there, there was an inn that they're trying to yeah. set up shop to give birth. Mary, most Mary and Joseph, and yeah. Jesus is coming, and the donkey, and the guy says, "There's no room in this inn." Right. How many things does God, mm. Jesus, want to do in our life? But there's just no room. Right. No room. Generosity makes room. Mm. Generosity releases things for, for Jesus to manifest. And, 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 and these things are, are subtle and practical, but this is how wise people live, even in this hour. And it's so important with that. Generosity, I, I, I says, is, is the response to knowing and walking with God. Mm. I mean, when you know him and get encountered by him, it's hard to be shrewd. Generosity is what comes. Generosity is the language of the Holy Spirit and a major secret that unlocks the doors in God's kingdom. I said this, generosity is the vehicle that propels life further and faster. Wow, it's beautiful. Because I think a lot of us, we come to Jesus wanting something or needing something from him, mm. but we're never coming a lot to just give to, give him. to him. And I think that's that's so important. That That is a mature statement. The more we've been privileged to walk with Jesus. Yeah. I remember my my prayers back then was just, what can you do for, what me? Can you do for me and fulfill my <laughs> heart? And, and now it is, it's Lord, yeah. how can I serve you? Yeah. What do you need today? How can I, re- is there anything in the earth realm that I can fulfill? Is there anybody, it is, it's such a place of maturity saying, I've been so blessed by you. Now let me help be accountable mm. for your life and walk with that. And that is such a powerful, powerful way um, of, of doing that. So I just want to encourage you with all that. And then it says uh, that then they were, uh, d- these w- wine, wise men were divinely warned mm. by an angel where to go. I love that. They then were lived by the, led by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Look at this. This is a book of God's yeah. divine inspired warnings. How many of us read this mm. and don't live by it? Wow. We may not, we don't need an angel. We don't need all, we, we have it right here. This word of God, it blesses, it warns us, it protects mm. us. And I love that they just basically heeded the word. Yeah. Amen. They lived a life in submission and built their lives around the word of God, mm. the spirit of God. And I, the Holy Spirit's talking. It's God's nature to speak. Mm. He speaks. He speaks continually. But without having communion with this, yeah. we're not we're not warned. We're not aware. We're not sensitive. And we're actually going aimlessly and can right. almost go back into Herod's right. traps. Yeah. We've got to hear and build and heed the word of God. It's so important. But I just love that. They, they were divinely warned. Uh, they had a dream that they should not go back to Herod and depart to their own country. And I love it. Another way. Yeah. That leads me to my last point here. They departed another way. You know what? When you come to Jesus, Change. when you call on the name of Jesus, when you get saved, you don't go back the same way. It's good. You go back another way. There's a transformation that takes place. And I love that. These magi, astute, astrology men left and they were changed with Jesus. And there should be a distinction about us as believers. We are his chosen people, a royal priesthood. We are different. We are salt and light in the earth. And I'm just praying that maybe a fresh encounter will come, that you won't go into 2023 the same. You'll go in a new a new mindset, a new attitude, a new framework, a new perspective, because we are, we are his, the sheep of his pasture. And when Jesus marks us and sets us apart, we were in Egypt, but we've been set free from yes. Egypt. And now we're going to the promised land in Jesus. And we don't look like that. And there's a transformation. Do not be conformed to this world. 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may approve what is the good and acceptable and perfect with God. And these wise men came back different. Yeah. They were different husbands. They were sure. different moms. They were different families. And there should be a distinction, amen, to the people who love and follow Jesus our lives transformed and changed. And those are just some practical things it's Beautiful. that I think in now after yeah. my stewardship and response to Jesus is required. And I think there's some practical ways mm -hmm. there. Can we do one more thing real quick before we're done? Yes. I've enjoyed this. <laughs> I've got 40, a couple seconds left on the clock. Real quick, First Thessalonians. <laughs> okay. All the way in the back, First Thessalonians. I hope that this is in here. This is yeah. an old Bible of yours. Yeah, that's that... my old one. There we go. There we, there go. we found it. <laughs> First Thessalonians. Okay. okay. And the, the, the conclusion there, verse 5. 1 verse 5? Or? First Thessalonians chapter 5. Oh, 5. Verse 16 through 24. I think this is almost a very practical protocol of now after our response yes. to Jesus. Would you read it, babe? Beginning verse 16. Rejoice always. When? Always. <laughs> <laughs> Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, mm. for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Mm. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good and abstain from every form of evil. And then the conclusion of that, what he will do, 23 and 25, 23 now, and 24. May the God of peace himself mm. sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's been an honor to be in your home. There is no greater message. There is no more good news. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think we can articulate the wise men's response is everything in this hour. Let's be wise. Mm. Let's do what's right. Mm. Hey, dad. Hey, mom. Hey, teenager. Hey, uh, elderly person, live wise in the earth in our response to Jesus. It's so powerful. Maybe you've never committed your life to Jesus. Maybe you've toyed with it, but you've been an outsider. Maybe you've even done some religious things or communion or you've attended church in some way or if you listen to a radio program or you've seen some songs or gone to a concert, but you're still an outsider. You have not gone and opened up your heart and fell and worshiped Jesus as the Lord he is. I can assure you, wherever you try, wherever you search, you'll always end empty because only Jesus, the son of the living God, is the way, truth, and the life. And until you fully surrender and accept him as your Lord and Savior, you'll always have an eternal emptiness awaiting his arrival. So right where you are, the Bible says so beautifully, babe, that if we can believe in our heart yeah. and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be saved. Yeah. And the promise in Acts 16 is that our whole household shall be saved. Yeah. And that's God's promise to you. There's nothing you've done to separate him from the love. He shed his blood and he became sin to reconcile us back to him. And what a beautiful moment, December 25th, 2022, or whenever you're watching this, to get right with Jesus. It'd be our honor to lead you in a prayer right where you are. Revelation 3.20 says he's knocking on our hearts. Would you let the King of glory come in? Right where you are, just close your eyes. Let's just get personal for a moment. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I'm going to ask you to repeat it after me. I'm going to say it now, but repeat me. Just follow our line. Say, today, Jesus. Today, Jesus. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. You are the star. You are the star. Son of the living God. Son of the living God. In you is life and light. In you is life and, and light truth. And truth. Today I repent of my sins. Today I repent of my sins. And I renounce this world. And I renounce this world. Herod. Herod. Pharaoh. Pharaoh. All the things that are in this place. And all the things that are in, in this place. And I accept you. And I accept you. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Fill my life with your spirit. Fill my life with your spirit. Plant me in your house. Plant me in your house. Use me for your will. Use me for your will. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Today I proclaim. Today I proclaim. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Amen. Well, if you're a part of our world, we can't wait to see you. 1 1 23. Yes. <laughs> That's crazy, huh, babe? Be powerful yeah, day. We'll be there. I have a message. Uh, not yet. By faith. <laughs> I'll get a word from the Lord. We're going to have a great time. Also, um, if you are a part of this ministry and you serve here, 
you're a part of what we love and thank you, but also remember your generosity. Remember your faithfulness. Remember that just like these wise men, they brought gifts that your support of this ministry enables us to do all we do. And to be honest, this year we've never had more fruit and have never been able to do more. God's opened amazing doors and that's all by the faithfulness of the people. So right here are some ways to give and to support. Remember to tithe and to offer and honor the Lord in this hour. What a great time to give a gift. And what you allow us to do, we're able to continually do locally and globally all over the world. We love you so much. Have a wonderful Christmas. Merry Christmas.